Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Orisund once again and we're going to go back to Copenhagen in Denmark and revisit a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. Now, the beers I've had from these guys in the past have been very nice. It's been mainly different kinds of IPAs that I've tried from them so far, but the one that we're going to have a look at today is the very first beer that I tried from these guys, if memory serves me correctly. It's a beer that I've been chasing for quite a little while because I wanted to do a sit down review of it ever since I tried it and finally I managed to get a hold of a can. So hopefully this beer is as good as I remember it, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it. I'm certainly curious to try it again. So for this review then, we are going to go to Vidovra, which is to the southwest of central Copenhagen, and we're going to have a look at another beer from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative. So this particular beer is called Octopils. It comes in at 5.1% ABV, and this one is an Italian style pilsner. So um, yeah, when we talk about Italian pilsners, basically these are slightly hoppier and more bitter versions of the regular pilsner, but they do seem to be quite popular at the moment actually. So yeah, this should make for a really nice review. Uh, a couple of shout outs in this video. First off, to Simon Friend. Now, the reason for this shout out is that maybe two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago now, I can't quite remember, uh, Simon, who is a good friend of my friend Craig Samuels over at Kent Beer Reviews, check out his channel, uh, Simon was over in Copenhagen for the Mikula Balhaun Festival and um, we went to Shiosk after we'd been at the festival and we went up to their bar called Barra Barra Barra, if I remember the name correctly, just upstairs and round the corner a little bit and we drank one of these together and we both really enjoyed it in fact. So I've been chasing this can ever since then to do a sit down review of, so that is pretty cool. So Simon, I hope you watch this video and I hope you enjoy this. I hope you remember the beer actually as well, but he, he knows his stuff, so I've got a feeling that he might. Um, but a special shout out as well to Jessica from the Beer Hive in Amar in Copenhagen. Really lovely little beer shop. Jessica kept this beer aside for me, along with a couple of the other Danish ones you're going to see over the next few videos. And she is also involved with the Tap House Amar bar as well. And that's somewhere that I do need to go and check out and maybe film a little out and about video. But uh, yeah, a big thank you to Jessica for keeping this one aside for me. I'll put the link to her uh, Facebook page in the video description for you below. So if you find yourself in Amarbro or stopping off at the Amarbro train station, metro station in Copenhagen, then it's only a five minute walk to the shop and it's definitely uh, worth having a look at that. Very good selection of Danish stuff and also things from other places across the world too. But yeah, this review will also celebrate the fact that I'm getting old and turning 30. So yeah, it's my 30th birthday tomorrow. This is a beer I've wanted to review for quite some time. So I thought this is a nice, uh, this is a nice review. This is a nice beer to review for that day. Of course, you will see a Scottish review uh, appear too, but this will be the evening Scandinavian review for you. So yeah. Me, me turning old, thumbs up to that, it's quite funny. But yeah, let's crack on with this review then and just see how we go. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Slowburn Brewing Corporate before, and hopefully we can add some more to that list at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to very regularly because I live in the south of Sweden, very close to Denmark, and I love my Danish beers. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Slowburn Brewing Cooperative. So as I've mentioned to you already, Slowburn Brewing Cooperative are based in Fedovra, which is to the southwest of central Copenhagen, and the company was founded back in 2018 by Amelie Knage, Stefano Ereni, and Andrew Keaton. 
So Amelie worked at Ul Ubrud, which is one of the Mikula bars, and she also worked at Shiosk as well, and she started one of the first kombucha breweries in Copenhagen, which is called Valver Kombucha, and she gradually just moved over into home brewing beer. But now in the brewery, she assists in the brewing side of things, and she also manages the sales and distribution. So Stefano is the head brewer and he's originally from Milan in Italy and he studied biotechnology before going on to work for Birificio Rurale in Italy before moving to Denmark to work for White Labs Yeast Company and also for the Fermentoren beer bar as well which you'll find quite close to the uh, Copenhagen Central Station. That place is also worth checking out. But Andrew is originally from the US and he moved over to Copenhagen back in 2010 when the Nordic beer scene was still in its infancy and he comes from a background in software engineering and development. He deals with the finance and social media side of the brewery, but he also experiments with sour beer and the barrel aging project uh, as well. They've started releasing a few beers from their barrel aging uh, side of things too, so I will need to see about getting a hold of, uh, of a few of those actually. But uh, yeah, they are supposed to be pretty nice from what I've heard. But these guys, as I say, it's still a very new addition to the Copenhagen beer scene, although they are getting close to three years old now. They do host taproom events at the uh, at the brewery. You can go to the brewery and buy the beers as well, from what I understand. And as of December 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 50 different kinds of beer. Uh, like I said earlier, the ones that I've tried have mainly been different kinds of IPAs. But uh, yeah, they are a very, very nice little brewery, these guys. I think the ones I've tried have been core range beers as well, so I will need to try and see if I can get hold of some of the more random ones, actually. But uh, yeah, that is all I can really tell you about Slowburn Brewing Cooperative for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's crack on then and have a little look at the beer itself. So um, just to have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up, you can see at the top there, there it is Octopils, Italian Pilsner, 5.1% ABV. You can see the squid tentacle there, which is pretty cool, the octopus. And there you can see Slow Burn Brewing. Cooperative. But yeah, this is a 440 milliliter can. I think this one cost me about 45 Danish kroner. So that's going to translate to roughly about maybe what about 60 Swedish. So about six euros. Um about five yeah, about five pounds sterling. And I guess that's going to be in the region of you know, about maybe six dollars fifty American, something like that, just to give those of you watching across the uh across the world an idea of the price of this one but yeah you will pay a little bit more for danish beer but as i've told you before copenhagen in my opinion is one of the best craft beer cities in the world so yeah i don't mind paying a little bit more for the danish stuff uh plain silver topped can on this one as you'd expect but 440 milliliters as we said earlier a 5.1 percent italian pilsner so basically a little bit more of a hoppy and bitter pilsner so we'll get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then really happy to be able to finally make a review video for this beer because every time I've gone across to Copenhagen since uh, that time at the Mikula Valhalla Festival I've been trying to get a hold of this and uh, I just took the chance when I flew back over this time I just messaged uh, Jessica and asked her if she had any octo pills and I think she only had one or two cans left and she kept this one aside for me so again a big up to her for um, holding this one for me so yeah, it's definitely becoming one of my regular beer shops, of course. I, still, I always go to Shiosk as well, but uh, yeah, I will all, probably always stop off in, uh, at the Beer Hive, pardon me, in Amar from, uh, from now on and see what they've got as well. That lovely little beer shop. And Jessica's really cool, actually. Always enjoy chatting to her about beer. But yeah, anyway, uh, we've got most of the beer out and into the glass and it looks exactly right as you would expect. Beautiful head on the beer, incidentally. So it's poured with just under a finger of a frothy, I would say, kind of cream coloured head. I don't think that's a perfect white head, but one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. And overall, it does look very nice. As you can see, this beer does have a degree of natural haze to it. So, um, you know, Italian pilsners can vary like that. Some of them can be unfiltered and naturally hazy like this. 
but some of them can be uh, very, very clear. But in terms of the colour of this beer, I think it's fair to describe this one as a kind of pale golden straw. We would expect that, of course, but remember the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use, two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel ageing that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of the beer also, but you don't really have to care about that when it comes to pilsners. It's only really sour beers that that is going to affect uh, so much or where you need to care about that, of course. But in terms of what you would expect from a pilsner um, of any description or a hellas lager even, then uh, there's nothing really surprising about that. So remember, the origin of the Pilsner beer is from the city of Pilsen in the Czech Republic, formerly the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It was created by a, a Bavarian brewer who went to Pilsen, brewed this beer, apparently not a very nice man. He only lasted in the town about two years. But then, of course, that beer went on to become a uh, Pilsenski Prazdroy, or as it's known more commonly across the world, Pilsner Urkel. That was the very first uh, Pilsen beer. I think it was 1842 or something like that, if memory serves me correctly. But yeah, Pilsner is the most popular or the most drunk style of beer across the world. So uh, yeah, and there's been a little bit of a revival of these. There's more and more breweries having a go at brewing lager these days. And remember, the definition of a lager beer is a cold temperature fermentation. Um, you know, the fermentation in these, the, the, the uh, bottom fermenting yeasts always take place at between about 10 and 12 degrees. Ales, of course, ferment slightly higher than that, but top fermenting yeasts uh, between 15 and 18 degrees Celsius normally. So yeah, that's a basic definition of a lager versus an ale and a wee bit of the history of the Pilsner. The Italian Pilsner, as I mentioned earlier, is a slightly more hoppy and bitter version of the, uh, the regular Pilsner. In my experience, the other difference to note would be that the German ones tend to be a little bit kind of crisper um, and you know a little bit lighter and crisper, whereas the Czech variants tend to be a little bit more kind of smooth and sometimes a little bit creamy actually. So yeah, that's another thing you can talk about with them. But that's enough about the style and things. This beer looks exactly as you would expect from the style, so I think we can take a look at the nose and see how we go. Uh, I should also point out as well, there wasn't anything really mentioned on the website or the untapped page about exactly what hops and things were in this one, uh, from what memory, if memory serves me out, the only thing I think it might have mentioned was that there's maybe a bit of sapphire in this one. But yeah, let's have a look at the nose and see how we go. <sighs> yeah, beautiful smelling beer. Of course, if we're talking about Italian Pilsners, the one that you have to think about, of course, would be Birificio Italiano uh, Tipo Pills. That's a beautiful beer, so try that. It's a bit of an icon of the, the Italian craft beer scene. And I think that is the one that is termed the Italian Pilsner. Um, but even if you talk about the big boys like, you know, Peroni and Moretti and things like that, those beers always were a little bit more hoppy than the... Um, they were always a little bit more hoppy than the their German counterparts, but Pilsner Urkel, of course, has 30 IBUs, um, so that's also worth bearing in mind. But yeah, um, aroma-wise, this just smells absolutely lovely. You've got a lovely kind of, the malty character in this one has a fair bit of prominence, which I really like. You can smell really nice kind of fresh hoppy characters to it as well. Um, it's just got a nice kind of bright, but still quite smooth green component, and you've got a lovely little bit of a kind of oily, slightly juicy, fruity character as well but uh, aroma wise this one is really really nice so it gets a big thumbs up from me let's break that aroma down for you a little bit more and just describe it a wee bit more in depth so um on the malty side of things you can smell there's a little bit of bread crust to this one absolutely the bread crust that kind of fresh uh, white bread almost hedgehog like roll that forms the backbone of the beer on top of that you have um, on top of that, you've definitely got a little bit of a smooth kind of white bready character there. Again, it comes across like a sort of fresh hedgehog roll um, type thing. Is there a bit of wheat in this actually? Hmm, I wondered. No, it's just barley malt that's in this. Um, yeah, I would have thought uh, just from the smoothness that this one has and the almost the density of the bready character, I did, I did wonder if there might have been a little touch of wheat in that. And what I was going to say is that that's quite unusual. For, uh, for a Pilsner of any description. I think in America, they actually, some of the breweries over there, when they brew their Hellas Lagers and things like this, they sometimes put a little bit of wheat in them. But if we're talking originality, then you don't, um, then you don't really get that um, so much over in, in Europe, actually. But yeah, the, the flavor, the, the aroma 
on the bready side of things with this beer is very nice. You can smell a little bit of the Pilsner malt coming out of this one as well. And as I've explained in previous videos, Pilsner malt is a really annoying thing to try and describe the flavour and uh, the flavour of. Um, the aroma, you can describe it a wee bit more, but you can sort of just smell the crispness coming out of the, out, you know, that comes out of the, um, of the aroma quite often. So, yeah, that's, you can really smell that here. So the kind of top of the nose, if you take the aroma of this beer in, you know, quite deeply, you can really just smell that crispness from the, the pills the It's really difficult to describe, but you certainly get a nice little bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity type quality out of this one. You quite often get this from pills the mall. I think I might even say there is a wee touch of a straight up caramel out of this one, but yeah, a little bit of a toasty to McVitie's digestive biscuity. Um, grainy note out of it. But, um, yeah, bread, yeah, as I say, bread crust, white bread, a little bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing, and just a wee touch of a kind of straight up caramel. Then you've got the pills and the malt crispness. In there as well but aroma wise the the malty side of this uh, beer is very very nice actually so it gets a big thumbs up from me now on the hoppy side of things i think it's quite interesting so as i say there's something i've got a feeling that i might have read this beer has sapphire hops in it but i'm not 100 percent sure um it certainly has that german noble hop quality to it um, so for me, there's a little bit of smooth earthiness there at the back of the nose, you can pick that up right away. Um, the floral notes for me do have the brightness of the German hops. I always found that the Czech hops were a little bit more kind of spicy than the German ones, and the Slovenian ones were just really, really smooth. So for me, those are the three kinds of double hops, German, Czech, and, um, and Slovenian. You do get Austrian hops as well, but you don't hear so much about them. There is a, a hop producing region in Austria, which I learned about when I was reviewing all those Vienna lagers a couple of months back. But yeah, on the um, on the the green component for me, yeah, you've got a little bit of earthiness and smooth earthiness at that behind it. You get a nice little bit of bright floral aromaticity, and you've got a nice kind of smooth, slightly like wet, freshly cut grass uh, coming off of the nose of this one. So I really like how that goes together too. Um, yeah, on the. Um, yeah, on the the green side of things, though, I think it comes across really nicely. And again, when it comes to these lager beers, for me, I like to rate them in terms of authenticity uh, compared to what you'd find in Germany or the Czech Republic. And this one really has that level of authenticity. When it comes to the fruity side of things, it's really nice as well. You get maybe like a tiny little bit of apricot coming out of this one, but there's a very slightly kind of peary note out of it, a bit of a kind of slightly apple sort of thing too. Yeah, so I think it's fair to say you've got a little bit of an apricot, almost very slightly sultana type note also, and then, yes, yeah, some peary apple esters too. And these are all things that we've had from, uh, from Pilsners in the past, and, you know, the fruity notes in these beers tend to mix in with the grassy side of things. But, um, yeah, lovely, lovely smelling beer, and it has the authenticity that you would expect of this uh, this style. So yeah, that was I think one of the reasons why I was so impressed with this beer the first time that I had it, because it was really nice and drinkable and it just stuck to the style um, so well actually. So yeah, I think it's about time that we try this one. So this is the Octopils 5.1% ABV from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative in Fedover to the southwest of Copenhagen to celebrate me getting old and turning 30 tomorrow. And uh, of course, a cheers, a skull to uh, both Simon Friend and Jessica. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, skull, cheers. Yeah, that is very, very nice. Kind of annoyed at myself for only getting the one can of it now. It's my, it's I always, I quite often have some of these lager beers. I'm just like, I wish I'd got a keg of that. But as I tell you, I say that, and I, you know, I don't really drink beer outside of the the videos that I film for you. Beer is my hobby, but you know, at the same time, you have to kind of now that I'm getting old, especially, you have to just kind of take it easy with the amount of beer that you drink so i enjoy i enjoy drinking beer this way thinking about it and thinking what it's all about beer taster rather than a beer session if that makes sense but yeah this beer 
it's pretty nice. First impression of it is it actually reminds me a bit more of some of this, the, the Czech beers that I had, these kind of lager beers. Um, it's just got the smoothness and almost the creaminess of the, um, the things that you'll get on tap in the Czech Republic, but definitely has that more hoppy uh, bitterness that you'd expect of the Italian style Pilsner, but yeah, this beer is as good as I um, remember it actually. Yeah, this is one of the things actually, I talked about this uh, in a couple of other videos, I think maybe some live streams too. When I was at the Mika Le Bauhaun Festival, I found drinking all those sour beers was really quite hard going. But if you had something like this to kind of, you know, um, to taste in the middle of doing all these different sour beers, then you would really, uh, you would really, really uh, enjoy that. You know, this is, these beers are like, the pills of beer, they're good for drinking on their own, it's like a first beer to kind of get you into the sight, the spirit of things, but they're also very good palate cleansers as well, a nice kind of hoppy um, pilsner like this. But this is just a lovely, uh, lovely beer actually. I'd be curious to know how much of um, the production at Slowburn is taken up by producing this one, because from what I gather it is a pretty big seller. Jessica was telling me that, that this beer just sells like, like that pretty much. But uh, yeah, let's break down the flavour of this one for you then and describe it properly. So, middle of your palate then. Focus on the middle third of your tongue. So, you have this nice kind of, you can get the bread crusty base to the beer. On top of that, you get a smoother white bready character, of course. And as I say, I'm noticing the same in the flavour. Um, the... The white bready characters that you get out of this one are a little bit more dense, actually. So, yeah, this beer, it really, compared to some of the other Italian pilsers that I've had, it really leans a little bit more towards the bready side of things. But some of that's coming out on the back third of the palate too, so that tells me that it's something to do with the yeast, which we'll come to in a minute. But the bread crusty notes you get out of this beer in the very base, in the very backbone of the beer, those are a little bit more... Um, those are a little bit more kind of, um, you know, they're a bit more grainy and things that I remember as well. So yeah, it's actually got quite a bit of a kind of dry grainy backbone to it. Towards the front of that middle third of your palate, I think there's a little touch of a slightly woody note and that comes out a little bit more further into the aftertaste and it, it almost adds another dimension of sweetness to the beer. So I like that about it too. So yeah, grainy bread crust, little touch of wood, a nice kind of slightly thicker, um, white ready character sitting on top of that, and again, I almost thought there was wheat in this earlier from the, the um the aroma. But then on top of that, you've got the kind of more brown sugary notes, and you've also got the pilsner malt kind of crispness in there. So, at the back of that middle third of your palate, that's where you can feel the sort of dryness and crispness of the pilsner malt just pushing its way out. So um yeah. Um, I think on yeah on top of that, when you come further forward, you can feel that as I say, Pilsner malt. It's quite difficult to describe, but you just really on the back as you go into that border region between middle third and back third of your part, the Pilsner malt really shows you that kind of crispness and slight dryness that it's always going to give you. But when you come further forward from that, you've got a little circle in the middle of your tongue. So you can feel the base of that is like a McVitie's digestive biscuit. But as you go in to the, um, as you go into the, the, the dead centre of your palate, you do get a little bit of a straight up caramel out of this one. So yeah, straight up caramel, a little bit of McVitie's digestive biscuit as you move further out from it. And then that biscuitiness just extends out towards the, um, it just extends out toward the edge of the um the edge of that middle third of your palate. So yeah, I really like how that um how that goes together in this one. The um the the multi side of the spear actually as I say it's a bit more bready than I remember it being. Um but it's certainly it's still certainly very, very nice this one. And the breadiness I think really makes it a little bit more like a kind of check. Uh, pilsner compared to a German pilsner, if that makes sense. Although it is, we're talking about Italian style pilsners, but even so, um, yeah. 
Interesting stuff. Let's focus on the back third of the palette then. So the back third of your palette is quite similar. You get that nice kind of grainy bread crusty base to the beer. On top of that, you get the slightly thicker uh, white bready note coming out of it. Uh, and the graininess, of course, is a little bit more intense. Bitter flavours come out on the back of your palate. The sweeter flavours and things come out towards the front of the palate. We've talked about this before. But on top of that white bready layer, you can feel the yeasty notes to the beer. And, you know, the yeastiness is almost a little bit more like a slightly dense bread dough kind of thing. It almost is like, like a little bit of an almost peppery quality to it, this beer, in that sense. So, yeah, this beer is quite... It is quite quirky in uh, in that respect for sure, and um, so yeah, I do like the kind of I do like this the, that little bit of yeasty character there, and the yeastiness you can just kind of feel it comes over a little bit into the middle third of your palate too. So on the back, um, on the back of the um, the back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is definitely taller, but then as you come further forward, it just condenses down as you go into the kind of middle third of your palate too. So, uh, yeah, this works really well. So, again, a big thumb, thumbs up to, uh, to Slowburn Brewing for this beer. They've done a nice job with it once again, and I'm not surprised. Uh, and I'm, Well, I've tried this beer before. I knew it was good. But it's, it's interesting just to try the beer again and pick up things that I didn't really remember about it. But, again, it's, it's very authentic, and it keeps to the style really nicely. That's what I look for when it comes to these, these lager beers. I want them just to be well-brewed, and be nice examples of the style. And this one does that. It's nothing surprising, but it's well done. That's what you want, in my opinion. But let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer. So, um, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there, for sure. And as you move further forward, I'd say the earthiness is smooth, incidentally, but a wee bit more bitter. It does have a wee bit of bitterness to it. Um, but as you move further forward, it's got a little bit of um, a kind of herbal character to it. And then as you push further forward um, toward the kind of front corners of your palate, you get a nice little bit of a floral, aromatic spiciness out of the beer. Round the front curve of the palate, it's got a little bit of a lighter grassiness to it as well. Uh, and you do get a wee touch of zestiness to the grassy character, but it's still like a kind of wet, freshly cut grass sort of vibe that you get out of this beer. But yeah, again, it works pretty nicely. On the um, front third of your palate then, border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of a bready build up there for sure, so you can feel that nice little bit of breadiness. The base of the front third of your palate is definitely a little bit of the bread crust and a bit of the smooth white bread and then on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, let's focus on that fruity side of things. Yeah, um, for me it's actually, it's got a wee bit of a more kind of lemony, grassy sort of vibe to it than I was picking up in the aroma. So on the back half of that front third of your palate, you definitely you get a wee touch of an almost apricotty flavour sitting underneath. There's almost a little bit of a, I don't know, I don't think there's, I was going to say sultana, but I don't really get that. I think it's more, there is a little bit of the dried apricot -y note there, but then as you move further forward in this beer, you start to get the peary, apple -y notes out of this one. But then as you go towards the very kind of front tip of your uh, tongue, you get a bit of a more oily lime. And the limey character in this beer has a good little bit more uh, zestiness uh, too. And going from the flavour of this one, I had another beer that had sapphire in it quite recently. Um, I think that I've got a feeling that I might have been that I might be remembering correctly though this beer has a bit of sapphire in it, but of course correct me in the comment section below if I'm wrong. But yeah, the fruity notes in this definitely a wee bit of apricot, um, a bit of a kind of peri apple -y character sitting on top of that, but the base of the front half of the front third of your palate is a little bit more kind of limey. It's almost got a wee touch, a very slight touch of gooseberry to it as well. So yeah, uh, underneath of the back half apricot. Um, underneath of the front half is a sort of gooseberry lime and then on top of that you get a little bit of the kind of um, a little bit of a peri apple -y sort of thing going on but yeah the front tip of your palate there is a little bit of a kind of limey zest to it almost so uh, yeah this is pretty cool this one as I say I really like this beer 
and I'm kind of gutted didn't get a few more cans of it, but it's it's uh, it, at least I'm not over it in Copenhagen that often, so it's a little bit difficult to 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 get a hold of. But yeah, I think this one is uh, this is a very very nice beer actually. So yeah, big thumbs up to Slowburn Brewing Cooperative for this one. A really well done. It's like an Ita- it's an Italian pilsner definitely with the the bitterness and things it's got, but the mouthfeel makes it a little bit more like a kind of Czech pilsen uh, in some ways. I think that's fair to say. So an Italian pills are definitely, but with the Czech pilts and mouthfeel. But on that note, we'll round off the review with the mouthfeel then. So for me, um, you know, it's definitely at the kind of top end of light body, bottom end of mid body, generally speaking. For a Pilsner beer, this is one of the slightly, you know, bigger bodied ones that I've come across. Um, the mouthfeel is generally quite smooth and quite slick, but you do get an element of that kind of creamy character to it. A little bit of um, a little bit of um, the carbonation does have a wee bit of crispness to it. The malt base, as we say, is you know quite smooth. Um, there's a wee bit of sweetness in there as well as we said, and a wee bit of graininess in terms of hoppy bitterness. I think it's about. Um, I think it's about maybe 25 or 30 uh, IBUs. I think 25 seems a bit more reasonable. Doesn't, I don't think it maybe hits the 30 um, quite, but I think, yeah, 25 seems reasonable for this. And there is a bit of bitterness and lingers there in the aftertaste. So we said, yeah, smooth malt base, a little bit of grainy, a little bit of sweetness, and the fruity part of the beer has a wee bit of zestiness to it. And I find the fruity side of it to be a little bit more kind of uh, oily, for sure. But, uh, yeah... I'm glad that I finally got around to doing a sit-down review of this one for you. So, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for uh, for this review then. So, yeah, this one was the Octo Pills, a 5.1% Italian-style Pilsner from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative in uh, Fidovra to the southwest of Copenhagen in Denmark. Really glad that I got to review this beer for you finally on the channel. And I hope you guys enjoyed my take on this one, my... 30th birthday <laughs> Scandinavian review. So, uh, yeah, thank you again to Jessica. Big shout out to Simon Friend, of course, as well. And we'll leave it at that for this one. So, check out my social media, check out their social media, check out uh, Beer Hive in Amar in Copenhagen. And uh, of course, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the fairly near future. But thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. The Octo Pills, 5.1% ABV from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative in Fedovra, over in Copenhagen in Denmark. Slange, skull, and cheers.